Here we got a 2009 Dodge Avenger. We have two codes. Code one is P2004, which is the intake manifold runner stuck open, bank one. Code two is P2017, intake manifold runner position, sensor bank one circuit high. I'm hoping the runner is stuck open because of uh, some kind of carbon built up on it, but uh, I'm not sure. But anyways, let's go take it apart, take a look at it, and see if we can fix it without buying it brand new. Because at the dealer, this thing costs around a thousand something bucks just for the sensor and for the runners. All right, and all, and it comes in one complete unit from the dealer. All right, let's go take it apart and handle it. Okay, we're gonna take this intake manifold off and see if we can fix it. Okay, this is the intake manifold from the bottom. I just wanted to show you before we get started. First thing you want to do is loosen up the clamps. This one here, this one down there. Pull this out like that. There's a clamp here too. Like that. Take that off. Like that. On the top. Then on the bottom. That way we can have access to this area right here. Okay? Okay, down here you got a half inch bolt. It's attached to the throttle body down there. It's a mount. Okay. The next step is to take that one off right there. Half inch bolt. Then there's a bolt right in here. You're going to take that loose. Half inch. You got another one in here. You got another one in here. Half inch. One down here. Half inch. One right here. Half inch. Then one, that's the reason why you took that duct out of the way. And you got one right here, right there. Okay, so you got one, two, three, four, five bolts that hold the intake manifold on to the cylinder head. Get your magnet and try to get the bolt off first. Okay, oh, just dropped it, see? I just dropped the bolt, but no big deal. I'll get it later, okay? But use your magnet, okay? Okay, now let's get this one first, okay? These are the two hardest ones. That one I just showed you, and this one here. Okay, next let's get this one on the end. See, this is why you want to put tape on the swivel, all right? Okay, break this one loose. Take this off like that. This is why you need a magnet. That's why you need the magnet, okay? Now you want to get these three here. One, two, three. All right, get that in there. One in here. <coughs> this is the fuel line to the fuel injector, fuel rail. All right, snap this down. Take this loose. Get a rag so you can, you can catch the. Uh, make sure you get a rag so you can catch the excess fuel. Okay, now look at it. We're loose now. All right. Next, what you want to do is take off the fuel injector connectors. All right, the wiring. Pop that up like that. Take it out. Same thing with all the other ones. Take all that out. This one here. Push this tab right here. All right, push that in. Just like that. It'll come right out. Just like that. Now you want to go back here and pop off these little deals right here, right? They clamp onto the, the bolts there. Right. Pop that off for the harness. Next, you want to take off the connector to the intake manifold runner position sensor. Pull the red tab down right here, just like that. Grab the other tab down here. Then pull down. Wiggle it and pull down. Just like that. Same thing with this one here, okay? Map sensor. Next, this connector here. Push down on that. 
pop it out. Take off this connector to this sensor here. Take off this here. Pop it up. Pop that up. Okay, now you're going to start moving everything out of the way. Move this hose off to the side. That way we can get the sensor out. Move this over here a little bit as far as we can. I'm going to start moving things like that, okay? Now look over here. Okay, disconnect this here. Disconnect this one. Just crack it loose. This one's tough right here, so just work it. Now move them out of the way. That. Let's take it out. You got one more connector right here. I thought about it. Okay, take this connector off. You got one on this side, one on this side. Okay? Now it's ready to come up. And there you have it right there. There's the intake manifold. Right there. Okay? And these are the runners that are stuck. These are stuck open. Okay? Okay, this is called P2004. Intake manifold runners. Bank one, stuck open. Look at that. They are stuck. Big time. They don't have any movement. We're going to pull this off, this off, see if we can unstick it. On the intake manifold runner position sensor, you got three bolts here. All right? So, taking these off. So I'm going to pop this out of here. Note the position of the runner flaps. Line up right there. Slowly work that out. Just like that. So now I'm going to check the flow of this. Okay, see these seem to be good. I sprayed these last night with the carburetor spray. Let it sit overnight. I just went like that. And I let it soak because I wanted to see if it would bind today. And these runners are not broken at all. All right, look at that. So these are actually good to go. This may be the problem right here. So, okay, intake manifold, runner position sensor, right here. Now what you wanna do is you wanna clean up the mating surface on the head, it goes to the intake manifold. Well, where the intake manifold goes onto the head, right here. Okay, I did a thorough inspection of the runners and the issue is not inside the runners. The issue is in here. All right, right here, we are stuck. This right here is the stuck open position. This is spring loaded, and it springs right back. See that? It springs right back. When the car is first started, these should be in the closed position right there. But on this vehicle, they're stuck in the open position. Only supposed to open when they reach a certain RPM, but they never close at all. All right, so they're always stuck open. That's what's causing the lean condition in this vehicle, and that's what's causing the fuel trims to be up high the way they are. So I'm gonna clean it up, and we're gonna put it back on. Let's get this cleaned up too. See, this is not the problem. All right, I didn't have to pull all this off, man, but I had to see if these were really stuck. But they're not stuck, man. They're not. It's just this. Can I help? Oh, hold on, buddy. But they're not stuck. It's just this. This is what goes bad. And then they require you to program, well, the flash to the engine. Just to bring everything back to the specs, to its original specs. Because there's certain parameters that this has to stay within. All right? You got parameters, a high and a low. If it goes outside of that, those parameters, then the uh, code will set. Which is the P. 2017 on this. Now you want to clean the throttle body, the throttle plate, before you put it back on. All right. Get your carburetor spray, just spray it up like that. Get your rags, and you're gonna move the throttle back like that. I'm gonna put a little bit of WD-40 on this O-ring. Put that in there like that. Line it up. Pop that in like that. Now it's into the groove. The groove with the runners. 
Now it's into the groove. It controls the runners. All right? Just like that. Put a little WD-40 around here. Put the sink in there. You can move freely. Okay, okay, watch the notch. Stick it in like that. And position your holes right there. Just like that. Okay, now let's put it on. Make sure the mating surfaces are clean on the head and on the manifold. Okay. I'm gonna observe. I'm gonna put this side in first, put this up, put the sensor underneath the hoses. Remember that bolt I dropped earlier? This is why you need a magnet. I bring this part over the dipstick, the oil dipstick. Okay, you're finding those. You're looking for those two bolts on the outside. One here, one over there. All right, you just gotta line those two up. Right there. There it is right there. This goes on the outside. Just like that. Okay, let me show you a trick for your universal, all right? Swivel you got, get some tape. Do this. Just lightly put it under. Make it straight. Just lightly wrap it up, all right? That's it, just like that. That way it doesn't fall down like that when you're sticking it inside the, uh, the deal. All right, you can go like that. You get your 12s, you can start mounting the bolts on. All right? Okay, put it in like that. See how it stays straight? Slowly work it in there. Twist till it bites. Move this up a little bit. Twist. Okay, now put the nuts on. Start that one. Okay, what you, here's another trick. What you do is get some paper, put it on the edge like that. Stick the sock, stick the nut in there like that. All right, don't make it too tight though. Okay, because you're gonna make this part come out when you pull it off. All right, so you gotta, there's a fine line between making it too tight, all right? So, I had to lessen up the paper. That's good enough right there. All right, I'm not even putting it all the way down. That's good enough, okay? That way I can pull it right off. That way it doesn't fall off, okay? So now, move all this. Let's get it in there, just like that, and then twist, it's simple. That's so you don't drop the nut, okay? Because once you drop these nuts, man, that's it. Sometimes you can't even find them, man. It takes forever. Okay, this one goes here on the bottom. Just like that. This one goes on like this. That's a wrap for those two. Okay, now I'm gonna bring this over like this. Start hooking these up. Okay, lock these in. Okay, come across here. Put this connector in here. Snap that in, put this one in here, push that down, locked in. Okay, so now, got this here, put this on the bottom. Put that in there. Okay, now, put the red clips on, your fuel injectors. All right, and put them in just like this, but not all the way, just set them there like that. Okay, see how they're up in the air still? Snap this down. Then push this down. Then the fuel injector connector is locked in place. Okay, set that in there like that. Don't push it down yet. First the black connector, then the red one. Then it's locked in. Snap the black connector first, then the red one. There you go. Just like that. 
Okay, we got the connector down here by the throttle body. Okay, let's get this one in here. Two little snapper deals on the side. Okay, let's make sure those snap in. Now the sensor. All right. See that red one? See the red deal here? You put that in like that. Make sure that goes in. Then you're gonna push up on this and lock it in. And now this sensor here. Just lock this one down. Just like that. Okay, now for the fuel line. Make sure you turn the connector that locks them in. Just like that. Done deal right there. Let's get this in here. Put that up. Plant that down. Like that. One more down here. Plant that down. On the mounting bracket. It's attached to the throttle body, okay? Which is right. I know you can't really see it, but right there. Okay, right there. So, let's get that on. Get the bottom on first. Do the hardest stuff first. Get that out of the way. Okay, got that on there like that. It's good to go on there on the throttle body. This on the top, air cleaner housing. It's good to go. This in there like that. Pinch it. This in here. Good to go. Line it up the way you want it. Good deal. Tighten up the clamp. That's a done deal. And we're gonna start it after this. All right. Now let's start it. It's gonna run rough for a little bit because we got um, carburetor fluid in here that's uh, burning off right now. But it looks like everything's good. And uh, we're good to go, man. And that's how you take off an intake manifold on a 2009 Dodge Avenger 2.4 liter. I'm gonna wait a month to see if the cold comes back. Then I'm gonna check and see if we're good to go. Okay, with those intake manifold runners stuck open like that, what's gonna happen is you're gonna lose gas. Your fuel economy is gonna go down. Why? The runners inside here are stuck open, all right? So that's making the car run lean all the time. All right, and since the car is running lean all the time, the computer is going to tell the fuel injectors to feed more fuel into the combustion process. But what's happening is the oxygen sensor is detecting too much air content inside the exhaust stream. All right, so this car is running very lean because of these intake manifold runners open. P2004, P2017, both will cause a fuel economy issue. All right, and affect your fuel trims big time. So that's the reason why you're going to lose fuel economy. Okay. It's been almost a month. I waited to finish this video because I wanted to make sure that this would work. Okay, this is the, uh, the deal here. All right, this is what we did. We took off the uh, intake manifold, which the runners are, which the runners are inside here. Then we took off the intake manifold runner position sensor. And what I did is I sprayed the uh, runners with carburetor spray and I left it overnight. I just soaked them, okay? Then, what I did with this is I sprayed the uh, intake manifold runner position sensor, the internal part of it, I sprayed it inside and let it seep inside there, okay? And so now, it's been almost a month, it's three weeks and a half, all right? So pretty close to a month and we have no check engine light. Let's check it out. So this is after Close to a month, we have no check engine light. Let me turn it off again. Off, there's the light. Okay, there's the check engine light, right? Turn it on, car's on, right there. So no check engine light. That's over, that's almost like a month, okay? So we're good on that. Well, that's how you fix it, man. Okay, when I did this job, I didn't realize it would work. 
okay? But the question is, how long will it work? I really don't know, because I've never done this before, okay? But I do know this, that this part, included with the uh, sensor, this thing is a grand. This is over a grand at the dealer, okay? So it's up to you, man, if whether or not you want to try it. Carburetor spray and uh, WD-40, that's all I used. So that's the whole procedure. That's the deal right there, man. How long will it last? I don't know, but it's been almost a month, man. I waited on purpose just to see if it would work. And so far, no check engine light, man. But if it does come back on, I will post it on the video, okay? I'll put it down below in the comments. I'll let you guys know if it came back on, all right? So, that's it, man. Done deal on that. Don't forget, man. Of course, I'm gonna talk about Christ, man. God knows everything about you, man. He knows your pains, your fears, your anxieties, your secrets. He knows it all, man. You can't hide none of it. But God created you, man. He created you for a purpose, with a purpose. Remember that. And with the problems that we all carry, we all got problems, man. We all got issues. Everybody does. Every single person in this world has issues. Some more than others. But some, man, some people are struggling hardcore with the issues right now. Some people are going through some very serious drama or going through the motions, man, and it's affecting your life big time. Well, God wants to restore you, man. That's all he wants to do. All he wants to do is restore you, and he's waiting. He's knocking at the door, man. He's waiting for you to respond, but he can't because you won't let him in. That's the problem here. If you don't let him in, he won't respond, man. If you don't let him in, he can't help you, man. And he won't help you because you won't give you the opportunity to. Because you have free will, you have the choice to. But some of you ain't choosing to, man. You choose to live reckless, man. You choose to live the way you're living. Therefore, it's gonna keep you away from Christ, man, and keep you hindered, man, all right? That's why I always talk about Christ, man, and God, man, because he freed me. He freed me from the streets, man. He took all that junk away from me, man, the anger. I used to be violent, man, extremely violent, man. I hurt so many people, but today I'm not with that. I used to be an alcoholic, man. I used to drink all the time. He faded, man. Anyways, God wants to free you from that. God has the answer, man. He has the answer. All you gotta do is ask him. It's that simple, man. All you gotta do is ask him, repent, and be sincere, and just ask him, man. Keep in mind, the choices you make every single day, you either pulling away from God, or you're getting closer to God. Remember that. You either get closer to God, or you're getting farther from God, based on the choices you make and everything you do. First Corinthians 10, 13. God will never allow you to be tempted or tested beyond that which you cannot bear. That means that he will never, ever allow you to be tested too much, okay? Yeah, you're gonna be tested, man. Sometimes you bring the test on, on your own, on yourself. But you're gonna be tested, but it, it won't take you to the point to where you can't handle it. You're gonna think you can't handle it, you're gonna think you're gonna be overwhelmed, but that's not the case, man. That's a lie from the pit. The devil sometimes will throw you off. The devil will get you to think that this is too much for you. The situation is overwhelming. Right now, as I speak, some people are contemplating suicide, man. Big time. All over the world, there's somebody who is distraught, who is distressed, man, who is oppressed and depressed. Right now, right, right now, right now, this second, this minute, as you're watching this, somebody is contemplating suicide because they think it's too much. But it's not. That's a life in the pit. That's what the devil tells you. He feeds you all that junk and fools you, man, into thinking that you can't overcome, man. But you can, man. You can, and God, in that 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it also says, in your temptation or in your stress, whatever, in your test, God will provide a way of escape. He will provide a door for you to get out. But it's on you, man, like I said earlier. You make the choices, you make the choices that are either gonna break you or make you stronger. All right, don't forget that. Put Jesus Christ first, like I always say, man. Keep your head strong, stay bold, and stay firm in everything you do, man. But first of all, but most of all, keep Jesus Christ first. Stay solid, stay firm, and keep on smashing on it in Jesus' name, man. Go get it.